Hi everybody, my name is Rob Brosh and I'm also known as The Rock Doc and today we're going to continue my lecture series with the great Jimi Hendrix and the title of this video is The Four Sides of Jimi Hendrix and that implies that there's more to Jimi than just his great guitar playing but we're going to start there with his guitar virtuosity and I'm going to just go over a few quick points that made him um, so special. One of the things that he did often was use a few of the guitar strings to, to, to create distortion and feedback and then on the other strings he was able to play his great solo lines and melodic ideas. And this reminds me of the great Robert Johnson from the early 1920s who did the same as he developed the blues. Jimmy, uh, being left-handed, did not succumb to playing the guitar right-handed so he had the great idea of flipping the guitar upside down and restringing it so he could approach it as a true lefty. Jimmy assimilated many styles into his guitar approach from blues to jazz all the way through country and we're going to talk about that in a minute with his very eclectic record collection. Number two, Jimi Hendrix, the gifted composer and song interpreter. It all started with that record collection I just referred to. He had an incredible variety of music that he dug into as, 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 uh, as a teenager. He was listening to Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong, all, all great Delta blues artists, all the way through R&B, country music, early rock and roll, all the way to the great Frank Zappa. Jimmy had a great sense of harmony and then also how to um, take his harmonic ideas and fuse that with his great melodic uh, ideas and that to me is the root of his great songwriting. He also um, often talked about how he allowed songs to come to him so he never forced his songwriting he often would just let it organically evolve and then he's also very underrated as a lyricist sometimes that doesn't get talked about very much but just the way he was able to match words to his music was uncanny. I'm going to flip the board real quick and continue Number three, Jimi Hendrix, the singer frontman. Jimi's voice was very unique and personal, but he hated his own voice. In fact, he was so insecure that when he would record, he would record behind a screen because he didn't want to watch, he didn't want to have anybody watch him sing. He didn't want the, the engineer or the producers so insecure. He fought to bury his voice in the mix. But the producers always won out because they said, no, Jimmy, your sound's got to be up front. And uh, rightfully so, because he has such, such a personal voice. Uh, his stage presence was almost magical. When he hit the stage, he wasn't inhibited in any way. And his great voice uh, would, would emerge. Number four, Jimi Hendrix advanced concepts in recording and sound production. And... Jimmy built his Electric Ladyland studio with the goal of uh, using state-of-the-art miking techniques and effects to realize his musical vision. But tragically, his life was cut short, as you know, and he was never able to fully realize um, the potential of the recording studio. His constant goal, however, was to get the sound out of his head and onto tape, which he was always successful in doing. Uh, Jimmy got a very rich analog sound. Digital wasn't there at that time. It was very funky, very unpredictable. And lastly, Jimmy was a perfectionist in the studio, taking um, take after take, often um, for hours on end until he thought he and, and, and the band got it right. All right, I'm going to flip the board one more time. And um, you can learn more about Jimi Hendrix by visiting my website, rockdocmusiccourses.com. There you can subscribe to my newsletter. You can sign up for my rocking courses, which will debut this fall, September 19th, Early Classic Rock. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.